Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the final of our four guest artist masterclasses at the Vancouver Symphony Orchestral Institute. My name is Kristen Reardon McClellan. I'm the Director of Education and Community Programs at the VSO, and we are just concluding the first week of our two-week virtual program, and it's been a blast so far. Today, it is all about the flute players this afternoon. Um, and we're going to have a fabulous master class with several of them playing today. Um, before I introduce our wonderful guest artist, I just want to um, give a big thank you to our sponsors and to our partners who make all of this possible. Um, so for the VSOI, we have the RBC Foundation and Stingray Music, as well as TELUS and Newmont Canada. And we are so grateful for their support in um, all of our musical activities at the VSO and at the BSOI to make all of these events possible for our students. So I am pleased to introduce everyone to a wonderful flute pedagogue, flutist teacher, um, Leon Boise, who's going to work with the students today. And um, we're going to have five performers over the course of the masterclass. And um, they'll each be working with her for about 15 to 17 minutes each. And you'll see me in between introducing the next person as we go. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll bring in Isabella to begin. Hi, Bella. Hi. And you're starting with Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, I am. Great. Great. Bella, just tell us where you're from and where you study and what you're um, I'm from Vancouver and I study at UBC and I just finished my first year. Excellent. I really enjoyed the character. There was a real upbeat, light feeling, part of the fantastic idea of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Have you ever seen the play, by the way, the Shakespeare play? No, I haven't, unfortunately. <laughs> it's amazing, but this, this is a good representation. One thing at the very beginning that I would love to hear from you is more sparkle on the high G when you have the yum, bum, 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 so that it's not just up, but really a, a sense of what you have in the air. I'm thinking of a spinning column of air and a quick taper. So please start one more time on the C. Better, definitely. Just do the arpeggio right from the G, middle octave. Yes, lift the air. It's one of the hardest things to learn to do in wind playing. Keep that air moving up and out. One more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely better. Just keep that in mind. Now, when we start the major solo, the pickup note D is one of the trickiest aspects of the solo. Can you feel of it? Feel it as more of an up bow. Think of it as an up bow. Bum ba. Just try the first two notes. Yes, so that you're really leading from the D into the G. Bum ba. Yes, now start right there and go through the first line. And I want you to try thinking a bit more of gesture in this. Your tongue finger coordination is very good. I think one thing that would 
improve this and make it sound even more flowing is a due batute. I don't know if you know what that term means, but one beat every two bars. I love to throw my little bit of Italian around when the situation warrants. So obviously it doesn't work all the way through but this will avoid a feeling so think more every two bars at the beginning of this and see how that feels to you okay Okay. Any difference in terms of how it felt to play it that way? Definitely felt a lot better. Good. I mean, the point is find a way to make it musical and also to make it easier. So it's not a sense of taka 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 da. Now, from, from what I'm hearing, the G at the very beginning seems a little less resonant than the D. Can you make sure that you have more roundness in that G? Hold the G for a minute. Oh, just try to get that where you love it. Find a sound you love. better balance now, Bella. It doesn't sound so much like it's D oriented. It goes to the G. Great. So let's do this whole opening one more time, D to G, continue through. And when you take a breath at the end of the, the first major statement, da -ga -da -ga -da, when you come back in, make those four 16th notes lead as much as you can. Da -ga -da -ga -da. So it's really easeful and then you'll have a chance of daka 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 the adue batute and the next two bars and daka 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 so play around with that have fun with it i think you will really find that it continues to make it feel easier okay Bella? Yes. Thank you very much. I like the first half a lot. Can you make the snatch breath? directly in tempo. This is not easy to do. And a lot of people end up giving themselves just a little bit of extra time. However, when you're playing it on stage or for an audition, keep it going. You can really get that air in even more quickly than you think you can. So try two bars before that on the F sharp and then just practice yum bum yum bum. <laughs> Yes, that's it. Sorry, I tend to yell and it's not good. <laughs> just, just be quiet. But I get enthused when it is working well. That was beautiful. Do that again and go on this time. All right, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> that's fine. You're experimenting. No problem. Okay, and you may have heard already from your teacher that this spot where you just stopped often 
will be a, a situation where if you're playing it in the orchestra and your principal, you can say to the second, would you mind playing those four notes while I take a big breath? There's no shame in that, but you can't do that in an audition. And you don't have to do it either on stage, but it just depends on what's going to make you feel comfortable. I thought that was a lot better at the end of the second line of this uh, this excerpt. Are you using the Backstresser book? Are you reading it from the Backstresser book? Okay, so the one thing you want to avoid is is what we want. A little more linear direction. That was perfectly in time. I was delighted. So now take those four pickup notes and make sure that you arrive on the first beat of the next bar. And that's going to be a one major beat for two bars. So one more time from the ta ka ta ka ta ka da low G. Bella, I still don't hear it. It could be Zoom. I mean, StreamYard. I still hear. More on the B flat and the most. Yagadam, ABC, dagadam. And again, it could just be the way it's transmitted right now. But just try it. Yeah, it's probably not your fault. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was fine. Good. Okay, so now we're going to do the beginning of the of the end. So after that big breath, and you're going to try to take that in tempo so that you have. I want to finish this so we can get to your Bach. Just start right there. Okay, two things at the end. That was very good up to that point. Make sure that you are counting the two bars rest very precisely. Yum, da ga da ga dum bum ba. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yum, da ga da ga da. The exact same tempo. So it doesn't start to rush forward. Yum, da ga da ga dum bum bum ka. And when you get to the high G, yum bum bum. A little bit more feeling of sparkle. Okay? So how about the second bar of that last line on the high D? Da ga da ga. Or the, the last line altogether. Then we'll go to your Bach. That's okay. Yeah, keep your lips open. But that was much better in the counting. To take away something for everybody who's listening, avoid after the breath a louder sound. It happens to everybody. You've got to be really, really careful of that. But that was very well done. I am looking forward now to the contrast of Bach.
you, Bella. Watch out for the dotted half note in the last line. Be sure you count enough eighth notes in that so that you don't start the next bar too soon coming off the tie. Also, going into letter A, keep the tempo. Your soprano is right there waiting to come in. And if you slow down, that is not going to make her happy. And it also doesn't fit with the ponderous accompaniment, the two English horns, boom, boom. You understand the background here, the emotion that is being expressed. So you want to make sure when you do that, I sneak in a little snatch between the D and the C in the in the bar of, of A because the soprano is already on on the third beat. So that would be useful. Be careful at the beginning here of intonation because you have those two notes tend to be a little bit too low, especially when we're playing something in a more reserved dynamic. So would you, just to tune that up, start one more time from the beginning, please, and really keep your air going. We're almost out of time, but I think you can really, you can do this, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Let's just, be careful of this. higher the 30 seconds more in tempo no need to feel rushed one and two and da, 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 da. try that then i'll let you go Try one thing to practice this. Just play eighth notes when you've got the dotted E. Just right on it. One more. You one more. You you owe me one more eighth. Right, right. Just play what I played. Ya da da That's it, exactly. And when you start with the A, be subdividing. That's all the time we have, but I think that will help you to get a sense of not rushing through this. The mournful quality of this that is obviously so prevalent demands that nothing is rushed and you're playing beautiful intervals really well in tune. So work on your C and your B, check on a tuner just to make sure. Thank you so much, Bella. A Thank pleasure you. to meet you and hear you. Well done, Bella. All right, our next performer is Amanda Lawrence. Hi, Amanda. Amanda Daphnis. Love it. Yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself, Amanda, where you're coming from and, um, and what you're playing. I'm not able to hear Amanda very well. Does anybody else have that problem? Uh, Suddenly there's no... If I talk a bit louder, yeah, Amanda, maybe just talk closer into your mic when you're speaking. It might be okay when you're playing. Sorry. Yeah, because they're adjusted for my playing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and you are from... I'm from South Africa, but I'm studying at EBC in Vancouver. 
you're you're from South Africa and you're studying at UBC. At the oh, UBC. There is an, an echo also. Do you hear that, Kristen? Just a little bit. I I don't hear the echo. Amanda, why don't you just play a few notes from your stand and we'll make sure it's all set. Yeah, the playing sounds good. So you might, if you're talking back, Amanda, you might just need to yell. <laughs> I'll, I'll just shout. Yeah, that's good. Nicely done. Let's work backwards. I think I heard only one finger on that trill. Were you using both middle and ring? No. Okay, try that. Two fingers. Exactly. It makes the whole step much better in tune. You could use all three, but two is fine. In the previous bar, retenez means what? How's your French? Uh, Non-existent. <laughs> okay. So what I would like you to think of is starting with that very first 16th note triplet, you're not in a rush. So when you come down from you're really loving the contour, just loving it and making sure so that there's definitely a feeling of ease and never being hurried. So let's just take it from the previous bar, the D. Mm -hmm. Good. I think maybe your tempo was not quite what you had done before. It was a little bit long and, and exaggerated. That's fine. Let's talk about what's so interesting after 178, the third bar on that D. You have a forte and you have a diminuendo to piano. And it's very clearly written where that, that forte stays forte. Do you know what's going on in the orchestra in the second eighth of that bar? Do you remember? It's not the string pits, is it? I'm sorry? Is it the string pizzicato? I can't remember. There's a feeling of boom. So you've got to be sure that you're still 
full on that second eighth, then go ahead and make the diminuendo. Otherwise, when the orchestra comes in very full on that second eighth, you get obliterated. And that's not what we want from the solo flute. So be sure you're, you're keeping that really energized. So I'd like to have you go into it, leading into 178. So right there, you're building up to the most magical moment when suddenly everything drops out after 21 times of the vamp. Boom, 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 boom. And suddenly it's gone. Whoa. So make that truly magical. Go back even one bar before that and take a good breath for that A sharp that you're going to come in on. Should I play from that? Please, right now. Yeah. Right there. I think as you play that trill, try to think of the eighth note, bum, 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 one, two, three, in the second flute. Good. Let's just maybe get into that a little bit farther back, what we were working on just then. Maybe, would you please take a look? I love the opening. That's why I'm not starting with that. One thing that I thought was a little short was that tie going into 177. So let's be let's be careful with that from the beginning and pay attention to that and then go right ahead into the the second section of the solo Thank you, Amanda. Good. That was excellent length at 177. That worked really, really well. When you begin the articulated Bs, imagine yourself on stage in that amazing Orpheum that we just saw and wanting everything to be really, really clear, more distinction. <laughs> Then what scale is it that you actually are playing? All of those 64s give us what? It's just an A major. A major or Dorian mode. So get a little bit into your Greek history here and Greek musical history. Enjoying every quick note there. Just play the scale for us. Avoid waiting on the on the A. Ah, nice, exactly. And the same thing you could take before 177, this will be the last thing before we go on into Peter, three before 177. If you have the 
you've got quick notes there. They're not 64ths, but take some time. Really enjoy them. Just try that one bar. It's just taking time, but not at the end. here just find a way to shape the notes that are quick as beautifully as you can and not feel as though you are are uh, duty bound to rush through them and then going across the bar line so that you're not hesitating ya da 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 ta thank you now a little bit of peter Okay, thank you. I love the fact that your fingers are moving very strongly on all those arpeggios at the end of, of the statement each time. The air could move a little bit more energetically in the B minor arpeggio each time. This so that you really have the speed that you need to get that to, to sound. Amanda, just try that once from the F sharp. Yes, exactly. So now start that bar. Would you articulate it once, all tongued? Aha, something showed up. We can discover little glitchy moments that may have been hidden if we stop and articulate. So would you try that again? I'm hearing high D to B on the third beat being a little bit suspect. Good, once more. How about? Take the flute off your face. Take, yeah, take your flute away from your face and watch from D to B, what's going on? So you really, you're very careful of coordination. D, B, opposite motion. Yes, yes, indeed. That's it. Right? Exactly. That is going to help you. So you have. There it is. So if something is a little bit awkward and it's not sounding smooth, watch your mechanism. See what's going on with your fingers. And you can practice the way I just played it with uh, rhythms and adding the feeling of, I know what's going on. I'm going to clean this up. And the very opening, great character. Watch your accent so that you have... Yada da da dum da dum bum 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 bum. 
da 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 dum da yum Just do that. I have to let you go in a second, but try the opening one more time. Second bar, accents, please. Yes, absolutely. That was great. Much more energy. And avoid any slowing down on the end of the da 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 Just keep those right in rhythm. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you so much. Well done, Amanda. Our next performer is Megan. Megan Penn. Hi. Hi, Hi. Megan. Tell us where you're from. Um, so I finished my master's at Northwestern last year, and um, I did my undergrad at Indiana. And um, I live in northern Indiana, and I work full-time at um, Gemeinhart Heart Musical Instruments now. Excellent. Okay. Uh, looks to me like you're starting with Beethoven. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Leonora. Yes. Is my mic level okay, or do I need to turn it So up? far, so good. Yes. Okay. Excellent, Megan. Really, very, very fine. Your counting, with the exception of the very last duplet Fs, was perfect. I think you were just a little bit late coming into that. Okay. Yeah. Dead on two and three, mm, bum, bum, ba. Three, bum, bum, ba. I was also very impressed with your turns. You really allowed the first note to sing. So we didn't have da la da da, but da la da Beautiful. In the very opening, one thing that I have found very helpful is an idea I took from Jean Backstresser when she gave a class. I was running the NFA orchestral audition uh, masterclass series, and she suggested for the committee's sake, if you are auditioning on this opening of Leonora, use vibrato on the first measure and then take it out on the second. Okay. It's a thought. You sound fine the way you're doing it, but it is very interesting because then it gives people a sense of, oh, now we're in the piano 
and it's diminuendo. Do you want to try that once just to see how it feels? It saves the air also, mm -hmm. since vibrato can eat air. Beautiful. Very nice. Feel a difference on that? It's very subtle, but yeah, it's it does save the air. <laughs> yes, it, it helps a whole lot. And on the way down, I can feel how you are really trying to keep elevated. So you're not allowing pitches to sag, especially around the D and the C. And so that is, is great. I would like to suggest in the second line, measure 21, that if you haven't tried this, you could use the C sharp key on the high F sharp. Have you experimented with that? Have you used that ever? Yeah, right. Now I was just using the middle F sharp but venting the um, hole. But um, so you mean with the um, C sharp key in the middle? Yes. Okay. So that you I have as you go with the the regular fingering is just so awkward. Mm -hmm and is a little too flat for the middle seems to work beautifully if you have the c sharp key down the pitch is perfect and the timbre is really good just try the note itself right now mm -hmm. What do you think com comparing like it? it. Um, do you slide from the D sharp to the C sharp? Yeah. It's a little tricky to do that. But I do. I do. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm not showing. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, I would do that. So that would be, that would be important. Okay. So the yum, bum, bum. Lovely. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. In tune and a beautiful quality of sound. And really all of those E naturals and E flats look so simple, but you show a lot of musical intelligence if you follow the dynamics exactly and the crescendo. In order not to, to uh, forget your other excerpt, let's go right ahead to the solo now. Eleonora. A little short, just a tiny bit short, but I wanted to ask, have you tried other fingerings for that last note, the D? I have not. I'd like to suggest, in addition to the regular D fingering, you put down your G sharp key and your right index so that you have... Now, here's what it would sound like without adjusting it, which is obviously not correct, but... You don't need to use much air. You simply aim the air lower and it feels so good because then you're not worried about having to end too soon. Try just the fingering first, Megan. Mm -hmm. Here we go. There you go. That is exactly what I wanted you to try. Okay. So remember also the appoggiatura, for example, in 342. 
So the C is more. Just try that from the high A, the arpeggiation there. Ah, that's better. Definitely. So it's not da da, but ta dum. And then all of these, those are arpeggi arpeggiaturas, not arpeggios. <laughs> So make sure that you have more, more emphasis in the sense, in the sense of emotion on the F sharp. Try that. Mm -hmm. And keep going. Exactly. Definitely. And the other ones are the same. just remembering that as you practice it can make it easier mm -hmm. good and you wanted to do some of peter is that right um fine oh, mm -hmm. yes i think we do we do have a couple of minutes left mm -hmm. would you like to hear just the opening then or um because i sure. only have two to three let's well let's see i don't see christy yet. five minutes left okay i think we're okay so <laughs> Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. The whole the whole thing. Not not twice, of course, at the beginning. Just cut to two. Beautiful. Do try to hold that as long as <laughs> at the end. Very, very well done. A suggestion in the second bar of two. It seems to me as though the triplets seem a little bit rushed. That kind of feeling. You didn't play them that quickly, but enjoy them. Okay. Nice. Good. The next bar, integrate your vibrato more on that long A. So So there's a sense of breathing in the moment, in the mood. Okay, and then not a whole lot of, of shakiness in the sound, just control it. Yes, and I feel that was much better in terms of the vibrato. The next bar, the breath, when you have Oh, 
make sure that the note before the breath still has lots of life instead of gotta breathe. Do you think sopranos or altos or any singer apologize for the breath? No. So make sure you expand right there. Okay. Start on the low A. One more time. Oh, the um. Yes, the bar before twelve and eight. Yes. Do you feel the difference that that makes? Generosity in the inhalation. We breathe to stay alive. We breathe and therefore we are alive. That's what's really important there. So lovely, lovely work on this. I think that our time is just about up. And there she is. Megan, you are familiar to me. Your name is familiar. Did you audition yes. for something? Yes, I did. I took a lesson with you. It was about three or four years ago now, but okay. yes, I took a lesson and then auditioned. <laughs> you sound great. Really, really good work. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thanks, Megan. Our next performer is Joey. Hello. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us where you're coming from and what you're playing. Hi, everyone. My name is Joey. I'm coming in from Toronto, Canada. Um, today, I'll be playing Carl Renicki's Flute Sonata, Third Movement.
Thank you so much, Joey. That was lovely. Really, really filled with romantic emotion. That was so beautifully done. The very last note, I would make sure that it doesn't sort of grind a little bit. Ah, can you can you find a way to keep the vibrato still present in the sound, but not too obvious? Just do the last three bars one more time. Put yourself back in that mood. Yes, that was definitely more motion filled in terms of air use. Beautiful intonation, excellent, really well in tune. So I think you have got the perfect tempo here. It is indeed tranquil. It has motion as the andante would imply. One thought that I had is when you have larger groups of slurs, for example, um, I don't know what edition you're using, but after the a uh, tempo, I have the international. What edition? Is that what you're using also? Yes. Okay, great. So count with me. One, two, three, four. The fifth line, when you have... Just staying very open. Uh, exactly. I felt as though it was getting a little squeezed. You want bigger gestures here. So that they all fit together. They're part of a very beautiful big picture. So how about starting? Just go back to the end of that previous line and stay open flowing line. Nice. nice. Now, try to add a bit more of the sense of the sequential so that the second note of those duplets when you reach them is less. So it's not da da, but tia. Once again. That was something that I also wanted to comment on. Now I don't need to, but I will anyway. That so that the duplet on the second beat is really, really broad. And then you have the triplet. Great. So the next thing is toward the very end of that section. The color change, I think, could be even more since you you are good at that. I've been enjoying it and you're playing last week and now today. So make certain that you have the sense of that. Okay, let's take from the end of the previous line. hold on to that because yeah. it's da 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 which is so exciting. So on this very short demonstration of a completely different emotion 
anger comes into this. You you know the story of Undine, you know, or her her cohorts in the underworld in the water world. So this is very very different. Her father, whatever you want to think of this as being, you want at the same time to have a, an ending to the. There is a diminuendo here. This is so strong. Dieta, 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 dieta. You you want as much as possible. The high D I think was fine. The low D just seemed less strong. Whatever the emotion is, if it's anger or just determination. So would you please make sure that low D is a little bit longer. That's good because not only was it longer, the note was spinning and that was fantastic. Really, really good. I would connect a little bit more the, the first bar of triplets and the second. So that there's a better balance. Yes, that's it. And it's just strong if you are working to have better balance between the registers. Excellent. Um, then at the very end. Between the F and the A sharp, a little more clarity there in that triplet. is long enough. The third yeah. time was exactly it. Once again. Yes. So that is what you really want to work on. The whole thing right there from that spot to the end of that, that page. Yes, okay. What about that high E? Is it one of your favorite notes? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there. So are you taking off the little finger of the right hand? Yeah. Okay, so trust that. That will really help. And now add some vibrato. Aim the air down for more core. Okay, and a little bit more of a deliberate yaw. Lift the air, make sure it's an eighth. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing a little bit like a quarter. One off. <laughs> Don't be afraid to just let the core come through. That's it. That's it. There you go. Now, the last thing, the beginning of that line right there, articulate it more clearly so that you have. Ah. 
Uh, that's it. Tongue forward. Place it almost on your teeth, on the alveolar ridge. as clear of a, a T yeah. as I like to hear. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Exactly. And when you have the lower neighbor, the F sharp, ya -da -da, really be strong on you. Mm -hmm. And connect, ya -da -da. Exactly. There is the drama, and it comes from the air. I talk about articulation, but really, even more important is the air, the motion of the air when you are thinking about articulation and the placement of the tongue. It's very, very important. So that's what I wanted to hear from you, Joey. I think we're almost up. Kristen, how are we doing with time? I was just going to tell you that we were almost about done. So we okay. can go on to our final performer. Good timing, Leland. Thank you. Great job, Joey. Nice to hear you again. Thanks, Joey. Okay, and finally, we have Emily Richardson joining us. Hi, Hi. Emily, once again. And you are doing Hindemith and Bach, right? Yeah. Yeah. And tell us about yourself. Um, I'm originally from Calgary, but I'm studying um, at the University of British Columbia. I'm doing my master's. Great. job. There's a lot to concern ourselves with in this excerpt. And your fingers are very strong. You know the notes. Tongue finger coordination is very good. So you're almost there. I think now what will help you a lot will be just the sense of more easeful inhalations. I feel you're going ah, when you're, when you're like, ah, and Basically, yeah, daka, daka, daka. try to feel the expansion all the way through your torso in the back, especially, I mean, I like to feel what's going on in the ribs so that if I am taking a breath, the side motions, lateral, lateral expansion, as well as the back. So often we're, we're taught to take a breath and and feel that your stomach goes forward, goes out, but it's not really that. The motion of the diaphragm dropping down on the viscera and causing those organs to pooch out a little bit. And then just the 
the ribs also going out this way as the diaphragm drops down. All of those things contribute to what should be a pleasant experience and very often is not. And so we have to figure out in an ex excerpt like this, how can we make it a little bit more comfortable? So you are breathing in good places. I have no, no uh, uh, quarrel with where you're, you're breathing. It's just a matter of perhaps getting off of the note a millisecond sooner so that you can then get the air to, to enter your body. Before that first big breath, the beginning of the, the second line, make sure that you're um, descending thirds that are really beautiful, really, you know, D flat major and smooth. Just start right on that and then take that F breath. Okay. I'll, get off, I'll get off a bit sooner for that. <laughs> Exactly. I want you to do this when you're not quite as winded. So yeah, da, yeah, da. You're shaving a little bit off of that sixteenth note. <laughs> Better the feeling of <laughs> just remember that you've arrived and you can quickly leave that F. Yes, awesome, Emily. That was totally it. Let's see if you can start now from the beginning and go that far, breathing that way. Yes, yeah, that was fine. Once again, the thirds got just a little bit out of kilter, but the breath was much better. So let's assume now that you'll practice those descending thirds and make them really, really smooth. Start on your low F after the breath and sing across that last measure of the second line. Okay, good. I think one, one thing you can do over the top, really sing. So try that once. See, my breath wasn't fast enough there. You wanna make sure that it's, it's really working underneath the tongue. Okay, exactly. And you can just play the straight notes or tongue it. Great. Watching you breathe, I see a little bit of emotion this way when you take in air. So can you stabilize yourself a bit more so that you trust that opening your mouth, this is what Ron Paul used to say. People say, how do you breathe like that? I open my mouth and the air comes in. Trust that your body wants to stay alive. It wants oxygen and you can stand very, very pillar-like, not tense, but the columnar approach. So that when you take the, the air in, Just try that once on the last two uh, 30 seconds and take a breath. Okay. Did that feel different to you physically as you? Yeah, yeah. It's getting rid of old habits. I, I definitely feel the rest of my body wanting to help, but it's not helping. <laughs> and it's of good course. to <laughs> I totally understand. I mean, 
habitual actions are hard to break, but it can be done. You're clearly aware of it and you're an intelligent young woman. So I can tell that you know what you need to do. And it's just a matter of saying, I have to do this and I have to do this now. I've had students who are like this when they play and I'm trying to tell them you won't win an orchestra job because any conductor seeing that or other colleagues in a wind section would say, I don't want to sit with that. So you have to learn how not to do that, how to trust that you're exploring the music without doing extremes physically. So that that was a spot where you could put yourself, I think, uh, in a better place. And then the end of the, the fourth line going through the... Are you taking little snatches at C? Da 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 da. I took them when I had to play this. I always took a breath every single opportunity. Why not? That way, you know, you'll be less tense, less nervous about the the breath in the beginning of the next line. So start right there at C. Da 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 da. How about this? A breath after the A flat, mm -hmm. but take less time when you do the snatches in the previous line. Do you ever sing when you practice? Sometimes. I'm not always very in tune, but I, I do my best. I don't care about the pitch. I think we we train ourselves better if we if you make yourself do that after a while you just want to do that when you put the flute to your face that that kind of thing so try that once and then we'll move on Did you take four breaths there? I didn't take the first one. I did take the, the second, the last three. Okay. I want you to breathe every single time. And okay. I won't do it again now. I'm serious. Emily, okay. you can totally rock this. I know you can. But part of it is learning to take the snatch in such a way that it's not a big deal. You just yeah. open the door, da, da, da. You get it. Great. Um, let's see. The air at the bottom of the first page, it started really well. Just keep it going all the way through that, that sequence. And let's see. Yes, top of the second page, second line. Make sure it, there you're really focused on the air. So you take a quick snatch after the C flat and then after the A flat. And then at the very end, when you go back and forth between B flat minor and A flat major, let yourself arrive and then go forward. Mm -hmm. So that you're really thinking of direction. Give that a try, just from the high F. I'm just I'm wondering what Hindemith would say if you move that Alargando back the way you you did. Do you think he do you think he really wants that? I just think of Hindemith as a composer being so detail oriented. I I myself would never do what what happened just this last time. I would keep it going a little bit more. 
and then take that breath in tempo. Okay. That's different from how you've been doing it, but I think it really works well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, and if you're having trouble with the B flat, think about what it would be like to, to finger it with E flat. So, so you're thinking of a harmonic and how the air has to work, the more resistant fingering. Let your lower lip come forward. Try just those last five notes. Excellent, and keep thinking higher air, air stream also. That was much better in tempo. I appreciated that. The alargando did not start until it was indicated. However, I felt that when you took that little breath, there was something kind of grabbing. Did you feel it? It was like da, 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 da. So work on that. You'll be able to fix this. You know what to do. Thank you, Emily. Let's go to Bach. I'm so pleased that you kept the line moving once the soprano entered and did not think that it's all about me, all about the flute. It's not. <laughs> Suddenly you're, you're a descant there. So I think here too, there's a wonderful opportunity for you to work on more easeful breathing. So have you worked on bringing air in using the Darth Vader kind of, have you ever, okay, so you yeah. know how to do that. And you might even think of H-O as you breathe in so that you're playing and then, so that it, it definitely is a more open resonant vowel for, for the air. I think that something like that would be useful in several different places here. And you played it as a quarter, that's fine. The reason I prefer the eighth is that you've got the quarter notes in the accompaniment. Goes with them, so. So. Just being really careful, ho, think ho when you inhale. Let's see if that makes any difference from the beginning. Yes.
Emily, it sounded different to me in a couple of those inhalations. How did it feel to you? Uh, it felt a lot better. My throat didn't feel like I was fighting against it so much. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Good. I would probably at 10 take a breath on the tide over C. So that mm -hmm. the anticipation of the B won't be broken by a snatch there. Musical yeah. to me, that would make more sense. Then I like to have a sense of the sequence there brought out by taking a quick snatch before the C. So that's another possibility if you wanted to try and then just snatch breaths wherever you need. So okay. how about after the uh, fermata? Watch that tide over F. It was a little bit short. You probably felt that. Just conserve the air. I would play a bit more softly there because mm -hmm. suddenly you're a duo partner here. So that yeah. would make, make sense. Questions. We're just about out of time, but I wanted to ask if there's anything I said that wasn't clear or if you feel like you have enough now to work on in this as well as in the Hindemith. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I have a lot of tools to work on the breathing, work on some of the phrasing, snatch breaths. Yeah, it's really clear. Thank you. Good. Okay, a pleasure to hear you. Keep up the excellent work, Emily. All right, we are all back. And Leon, we wanted to thank you for your time and for your expertise and a wonderful class today. And it's bravo to all of you performers. Everyone who played did a great job. If anybody has a question about anything, just ask. I'm here. Stunned silence. <laughs>